welcome to another um, video of us doing a solar install. This time we're at the 12th Warrington East detachment of the Scout Group. We're installing 11 panels across the top. They're not getting done today, but there'll be 11 panels across the top. They're having a solar edge 3.68 kilowatt inverter and a 10 kilowatt battery. We're halfway through the install now. We've got some cables across. So come and join us and we'll show you where we're up to. Okay, so we've got the main supply coming from the disabled toilets down here and we're gonna be fitting our inverter and battery setup in this storeroom, stock room, storeroom. Cables have been brought over in the loft space, which we've already got in ready. So now we just need to work on both ends. We're gonna sort out the fuse board side with the CT clamp and the inverter side with the isolators, generation meter and the battery will be going there. So let's go and have a look over here. So not ideal what we've got here. Back of this wall, we've got the main tails coming in, main supply, into a 100 amp uh, main switch, which then breaks off to the distribution board over there. Um, it's an old board, it's got a shared RCD, and so on, so we can't connect to that. So from here, we're gonna take a supply radial out to where we need it, and we're also gonna fuse down that board, put it on like a 50 amp MCB. Um, yeah, it's just not really the best of installs. I'll jump down and I'll let Tom come up and you can sort of see what's going on here, but we've got exposed copper. I don't know if that tail's had a bit of a haircut and some of the conductors have been trimmed out, but it's just not a nice looking install. So we'll tidy that up. There's our radial circuit in, and there's our data in for the CT clamp. So let's crack on. We've got a bit of board. We're gonna be mounting the inverter, switch gear and isolator on the board, trying to keep it a bit neat. Um, and the wall's not the flattest of surface in there. So this should probably make it look a little bit tidier, a little bit neater. So we'll uh, trim it up and start getting everything mounted onto it. We'll use this 50-50 trunk in just to house all the cables and keep it all looking neat. And then it's somewhere for all the isolators and switch gear to sort of sit onto. This is sort of particularly useful doing it on a board if you're in a loft space or somewhere where it's really tight, awkward and not the best places to work. And it just gives you a little bit more flexibility to do everything in the nice open outdoors. Let's go about there. Yeah, so it stops you having to be crammed up in a, in a tight space and your work can look a little bit neater and nicer. Nobody wants to be sat in a loft space for longer than they need to. Get this bracket on. And if it all works out, that should be level once we put it on the wall. So, let's take a look on how this could look. I kind of feel like I'm doing a really bad cooking show, you know, when they're outdoors. Um, yes, yeah, so we've got all this stuff to fit on neatly as best possible. I'm going to be fitting some DC isolators on the Solar Edge system. Typically, Solar Edge recommend not to install DC isolators. With this being um, accessible sort of by children, I kind of want to make it as simple as possible for this to be shut down if there was an issue. So we'll put DC isolators on it and then sort of they can just be switched off by anyone untrained, unskilled, if there was an emergency. We'll get those labelled up. And it just means we're not reliant upon the built-in DC isolator on the underside of the inverter. Just a little bit more proportion, I think. And firstly, we'll try and make it look neat. So I'm a big fan of using these uh, bushes and lock nuts. It just helps to pull the trunk in together and it stops your cable sort of snagging and rubbing on, on anything that might be uneven or, or what have you. And I think it just pulls everything nice and tight. Um, so we've got a few of them on. ACs, DCs will go there. We need to put a box for our mod bus, generation meter, fuse spur, and then cables out. Where are we going to go? 
every job's different, so it's working out what looks good and what can go where. Let's get the inverter back so we can see what space we've got. And we'll sort of figure this out some way. So we're going to ask Jason what he thinks. So we're just working out where to put things and, and how to have it. Make it look as neat as possible. As neat as possible. I mean, in all accounts, that could go up there anyway. Yeah. It doesn't have to be there. So what we're discussing is solar edge mod bus has to be mounted in an enclosure so a box that big for a device that small seems a shame really doesn't it well we've got an idea of where things are going now and we're getting there the singles are in um, I'm just thinking I'm gonna put my stuffing glands on and I might go and stick this on the wall and um, bending over is not too comfortable so working wall height might be a little bit more comfortable. Get these drilled out, get it on the wall. I can get the cables in then. Get the mod bus this side, connect up into that fuse box we were shown earlier um, and test the AC circuit. And then we should be done. So let's go mark this up on the wall. And that's what our mod bus is going to be housed in. Let's go mark it up. They can come down there. That can come down there too. Beautiful. Okay, yeah. Already done. Already mapped up. On there? Yeah. Just needs spur into there, out of there into that. Data what's going into there. And then thinking, obviously if we knock off the power, sort these bad boys out. And it's the tail's going off there, we'll put a 50 amp over to that. Yeah. Uh, 20 amp next to it, yeah. do an hour circuit. Nice ferrule kit. Dropped it on the floor the other day. Actually sums my life up. So actually not having a battery on. Save my back today. Battery's going to sit below it there. What's nice about the solar edge as well, you actually do get a lot of room for a small device. So there's a lot of room to make your connections. They're not difficult, they're not awkward. Very straightforward. So this is a 3.6 kilowatt inverter. But all of the HD waves, so six kilowatt are based on the same inverter. Same design, same product. So every solar edge inverter we work on in this range is identical. It's pretty much the same. Which is great as an installer because you know where you're up to every time. We've got to mark up the cables and identify them. So you can do it with either colour, we can do it with markings. So we've got this heat shrink. I think this looks pretty good. And this way we can easily identify the polarity. But we can also identify which one is the PV and which one is the battery when it goes on. Fantastic battery leads. PV leads. And we need a torch now. Right, so if we dress these cables in, we can start to make them look a little bit more presentable. I kind of like to always do 
the battery cables at the back just as a way of uh, being uniform and consistent. Well, it's done. I'll tidy up. Test that AC circuit. And just label those isolators up. And that's us done. So there's MCB2 isolator bottom of the isolator to the spur and then to our four mil so that's me and jason finished today we've got the ac cable across from the main supply over to where the inverter is located uh, the company we're working for are going to come tomorrow and fit the DC panels across the top. And I think on Wednesday, one of their electricians is gonna come and install the battery. But we're all done, not as planned. We thought the panels were going in today, but nevertheless, the circuit's done, the inverter's in, and the DC cables are ready for the roofers to, to plug into. Yeah, so join us again on the next one. <laughs>